Hey everybody, this is Wes Moore, your instructor for macroeconomics. I'd like to welcome you to session four on the national economy. I hope that you're having a great day. I'm looking forward to this session with you. So let's jump in and get started and let's take a look at and see what we're going to be covering in this session. There'll be three things that we want to cover today. First is an overview of the national economy. We want to talk about the term economy and talk about how we measure and look at uh, the improvement or the decline in a national economy. Then we want to talk about how economies grow and decline and look at some terms that we use to characterize growth and decline in an economy. And then finally, we want to look at this idea of aggregate supply and demand. Don't let the word fool you. It's actually a very easy concept to understand. So let's get started then with an overview of the national economy. You recall from previous sessions that we talked about economics, and we talked about economics as that way that nations determine to fulfill unlimited wants and needs with limited resources. Well, an economy in the textbook by uh, McEarchin, the economy is defined as the structure of economic activity in an area in places like states, nations, regions, and even uh, the whole world can be considered, considered an economy. So an economy is the activity that takes place as nations, people and producers, consumers and producers try to meet those unlimited needs with those limited resources. That's what an economy is. And a national economy really is the focus of this course, macroeconomics. Global, global economics would focus on something like a global economy. International economics might focus on regions and the global economy, but macroeconomics typically is just the nation. So we're going to be looking at the uh, United States of America and talking about how we uh, understand its economy, measure it, and so on. Now the measure of most economies that's used is a term called gross domestic product. Gross domestic product, GDP. You'll hear that term throughout this course, and anytime you're talking about economics, you're going to hear GDP. Anytime you hear an economic report on television or on a streaming service or some media outlet, you're going to hear the term GDP. So what does that mean? Let's look at these three words here to begin to understand what GDP is. First of all, the word gross. The word gross. Gross simply means total in this uh, context, total, as opposed to net. That's the total of something. What is it? It's the total of the domestic product. Domestic meaning within the country, the, the goods and services that are produced within the borders of the country, not goods and services produced by American companies outside of the nation, but that which is produced inside of the nation. So gross domestic product then, the formal definition from a textbook here is, the value of all final goods and services produced in a nation during a period. That's the gross domestic product. And uh, it's also considered the nation's total income. So gross domestic product is all the stuff, products, and services that we produce in the nation in one year. And that's also considered the national income. In other words, the amount of money that the whole nation makes when you add up all the people in the nation working, all the companies, how much did we make? GDP is generally considered the total income of the nation. The assumption is that whatever you made, you sold. And whatever you sold became your income. So that's gross domestic product. Now let's talk a little bit about how economies grow and decline, the terms that we use to describe these growth times, these decline times, see what we can learn here about growth and uh, decline of economies. First of all, we know that economies grow. Economies grow. These are called expansions. Whenever the economy is growing, we call it an economic expansion. An expansion, the definition of an expansion is a period where production, employment, and income increase. Production, remember gross domestic product is the value of all the goods and services produced in the nation. So when the economy is expanding, GDP is expanding, the product is expanding, what we are making is expanding. 
And as we are making more things and we are hiring more workers to help make those things, and as we are making more things, we are selling more things, and that is increasing our income. So an expansion increases employment, increases production, and increases income. But as we also know, economies decline. They go down. These are called contractions. So we've got an expansion going out, and we've also got a period of contractions where things are slowing down. We have two terms that we use to characterize contractions, depending on how long they last. A recession, which is the term we use most often, is a period when production and employment and income decrease for a period, usually no more than a few months to a year. That's a recession. Those happen frequently. We call them economic cycles. We have ex periods of expansion and periods of contraction, expansion and contraction. And hopefully over the period of time you're getting more expansionary growth than you are declines and your economy is growing. But there's also something called a depression. A depression is when a recession just keeps going and going. And economists differ on how long uh, you must be in a recession before it becomes a depression, but most will agree that we've only had one of those in the United States uh, in its history, and that would be in the 1930s, what we call the Great Depression. That does not mean, however, that we cannot enter another period where recessions continue on and we have a depression, but it just simply means that so far we have not had but one, and that would be the uh, Great Depression. Now before we go on and, and uh, talk about additional ways to uh, calculate and add up what the economy does, how to measure it, we need to talk about something called inflation. Inflation. As we seek to compare the performance of the economy from year to year, we need to understand the effect of inflation. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking gross domestic product from one year and, and comparing it to the next year to see if we're growing or contracting. Well, there's an important thing that we have to account for as we do that, or our numbers will always be skewed. They'll always be off, and that is inflation. Now, inflation is the tendency for prices to rise over time. It's a natural tendency for the prices of products that we're used to, gasoline, food, homes, those kinds of things, to just slowly creep up. That's called inflation, that, tendence, that tendency for prices to rise. So for an example, if prices rose, if inflation was 3% this year over last year, then something that cost you $100 last year would cost you $103 this year. Most of the time when inflation is in the 3 to 5% range, nobody thinks too much of it. But what you have to do is you have to make sure that you're accounting for that when you're figuring out whether your economy is growing or not because the inflation can make it look like it's growing when it's actually not growing. So uh, the opposite of inflation, just for your, your knowledge, is called deflation and that is when prices will go down over a period of time. We saw that in the Great Depression, uh, uh, quite a bit of deflation where prices went down. That's, that's uncommon, but it does happen. So before we can know if the economy is really growing, we need to take out the effect of inflation on gross domestic product. So what we do when we end up with, when we, when we take out the inflation, we get something called real GDP. But let's look at a little a calculation here to help you see why we have to do this. Let's say that GDP in the United States was $100,000 in 2020. Now it's much, much more than that, probably 18 to 20 trillion, uh, depending on what the final numbers look like. But let's just say for ease of use, it's $100,000. And let's say that GDP in 2021 was measured, the gross domestic product was measured at 106000 Now as you look at that, you're immediately going to look at that, do the math, and you'll realize that that's a 6% growth. And so 6% growth in an economy, just for your information, is a quite a substantial growth. That's a great growth in a year. That's an extremely uh, high number. But remember, we've got inflation. So between 2020 and 2021, the prices of things have increased just naturally. So we may not have sold that much more or made that much more, 
but because of inflation, we look like we have. So what was inflation? Let's say that we calculated inflation at 3% between 20 and 21. Well, that would mean that $3,000 of that $6,000 increase in GDP was just the, the prices increasing. That means we didn't, we didn't necessarily make $6,000 worth of product more. We also made uh, some of that is accounted for by the inflation. So the real GDP, and this is the term that you'll hear more often than not, the real GDP is 103000 That's the amount that we, if we take out inflation, that's the real amount that we grew in the economy. That could also be negative in, in the period of a recession or even a depression. But we have real GDP is that is GDP with the inflation taken out. So it shows us the true year-over-year -year growth or year-over-year -year decline in an economy. That's real GDP, and you need to know that it's an important concept for you moving forward. So let's take a moment here now, and let's discuss aggregate supply and demand. We talked about supply and demand in our last session. And if you remember, we defined demand and we defined supply in this way. We said demand was the quantity of a product that customers are both willing and able to buy at each price. It's what they want. It, they've got the money and they're ready to buy X amount of product if it's available. And then supply is the quantity of the product producers are willing and able to supply at each price. So they're saying, look, at this price I will make this much. At, that, at the next price I will only make this much. Those are what demand and supply are. And you can look at those for individual products. You could look at those for Mountain Dew, for uh, Pepsi-Cola. You could do that for product categories like sodas or toaster ovens or appliances. But you can also do that in an aggregate way, in an aggregate way. Aggregate demand is when you take all the demand for all the products and services in an economy and you total it all up. All the sodas, all the bread, all the vacuum cleaners, all the uh, food delivery, all the painting, everything that you've got in the economy, you bring it together and aggregate it totally. So you can look at the entire nation, the entire national economy. And then, of course, the aggreg aggregate supply is the same thing just for supply. We're taking the total of everything that was produced in the economy from every product category, and we're totaling it up. Because aggregate means to add up, to sum or to total together. So aggregate demand is the total or the sum of all the demand in the country. And aggregate supply is the total or sum of all the supply in the country in a given year. Now when we look at the curves related to this, you remember we had the curves, the supply curve, the demand curve. What you have here is you have a similar looking curve. Remember the law of demand says that as prices go down, uh, the quantity demanded goes up. So we have a line that goes from left to right, it goes down. Well now we just have this and it's called the aggregate demand. It's all added up. And I didn't change these numbers from the hot dog example in the prior session. So forgive me for that, but still what this is going to show you is that this down here is the total amount in the economy that would be demanded at these prices. And this price level over here, when you're looking at the, uh, the actual aggregate demand curve, will be adjusted for inflation. So we know at these prices we'll have this kind of demand. But then we have the aggregate supply curve. Again, it looks just like the supply curve from before. It sloped upward from left to right, indicating the law of supply which is that the more you can, the more, uh, the higher the price is, the more the producers produce. Remember, we talked about that. And then again, down here is the total amount that would be produced. And over here on the left is the price adjusted for inflation. And when you put these two together, the aggregate supply and demand curves, you get these overlapping, aggregate supply and aggregate demand. You've got the GDP in the bottom. You've got the average price over here. And then you have the equilibrium real GDP here. So this will tell you the average price level relative to previous years and this will tell you what your actual gross domestic product is for that year. So 
So don't let it confuse you. It's the same as supply and demand. It's just everything is totaled up and piled up. And then the prices on the left, instead of having just dollars, this will be a, an adjusted average price. And then down here will be the gross domestic product for the nation for that year. So that is all there is to aggregate supply and aggregate demand and their curves. So that's the end of session four here, the national economy. I hope that you have picked up a few things from this and I look forward to seeing you again at our next session. Have a great day.